and welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study here at Faith and Victory Church. So glad to have you. Uh, we're going to be picking up with our um, service from... And once again, I forgot to turn off my volume. <laughs> uh, praise the Lord. If I, if I could get something to drink, that would be great. Um, but welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study here at Faith and Victory Church. We're glad to have you. We're um, picking up from our service last week and um, continuing with that teaching. I want to remind you, uh, this coming Sunday, Faith and Victory Church is joining uh, New Life Family Church for their Sunday morning uh, service uh, with at 10 a.m. Not we we've been announcing 10:30. It's 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Uh, and we're meeting there, and they're having the Reverend Kim Clout, um, K L A U D T, uh, is ministering there. Former lead guitarist for Milan Lefevre and Broken Heart. So we're real excited about uh, joining them. We will not have our service at 7.30. We will be, I mean, at 10, 12.30, we'll be having just that joint service at 10 o'clock. So, um, <coughs> love to have you come out and join us and be with us for this special service. And um, we're, we're, we're looking forward to it. Um, and then uh, Tuesday nights, we have our Zoom prayer meeting. Um, you can email us at office at fvc.org if you're interested in being a part of that service, and we'll add you to our list. Praise God. Uh, last week, we began ministering on the word living in us, or as we kind of turned it around, the living word in us. Hallelujah. Because the word is a, li a living thing. Hallelujah. And um, so as we talked about this word, living word in us, and how that in we uh, confess Jesus as Lord and accept his lordship over our life. Um, we're submitted to him. We're submitted to his word. We're submitted to his will. But then God takes up the position in our life, uh, in our lives as our caretaker. And um, we're in his kingdom. He is our righteousness. Um, and, but as our caretaker, he watches over us to provide for us and to um, be our bread provider, as it literally says. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We knew when the great big long handle things, you can hand it into the uh, set where you can't see somebody getting something. Hallelujah. Um, but we, we kind of moved into some new creation truths about being, we are in the family of God. We're heirs, but not only heirs of God, we're joint heirs with Christ. And, um, we talk about how the Father takes his position of care for us and his love for us. We, because of this, take our position as sons. And in doing so, we have his ability. He supplies and meets our every need. Um, and we, you know, learn, we, we learn to fully trust in him as we walk and learn and walk of him, learn of him. Um, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Hallelujah, or thy paths. Praise God. So we're, that's kind of where we left off last week, and we want to pick up this week. Because the Father has taken his position of care for us, and we've taken our position as sons, We've been elevated out of the place of mediocrity, out of the place of being governed by the, um, the laws of a fallen system. Though we're in this world, we're not of this world. Hallelujah. Satan is no longer our master. Satan hath no more dominion over us. Glory to God. We've been liberated by the power of God, by the fact of being born again. But I want to talk to you now that by virtue of our place in Christ, our Father is our provider. He is our caretaker. We are his sons. We become situation masters. We become the masters of the circumstances. Hallelujah. 
And circumstances can be arrayed against us. Circumstances can be set um, in opposition to us. But we are the masters to live victorious by faith. <clears throat> I like something the Apostle Paul said um, in Philippians, the fourth chapter. In verse 11. And help me if I get out of First Corinthians and get into Philippians. Paul writes in the King James and says, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned that whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Now, reading the King James and, and you know, in, in our time and reading this verse and our kind of mindset about contentment. You could read into that verse and say, I've learned that whatever state I am just to put up with it. And really, that's how most people do read it. That whatever state I'm in, I've learned just put up with it. You know, someday in the sweet by and by, when we cross over in the glory, it's going to be better. But the 20th century translation, um, no longer in print, but, you know, 20th century translation, um, says it this way, and I love this. It says, I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therein to be independent of the circumstances. I have learned that whatsoever state I am in, therein to be independent of the circumstances. What a glorious uh, enlightenment on this, this, this scripture. Paul is saying that no matter what I'm in, one translation says, whatever state I'm initiated into, um, however I'm placed. In other words, whatever you're facing, whatever has been thrown at you, the Apostle Paul said, I've learned to be independent of the circumstances. So no longer do they govern you. No longer do they lord over you. No longer do they have control of everything about you. But you're independent of them. <clears throat> for your position in Christ, uh, what it means to be a believer, for your authority as a believer. Praise God. You are independent of the circumstances. We, therefore, are to lord over our circumstances because the greater one lives in us. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 4 and 5 state, um, I mean, I said chapter 3, verses 4 and 5, yeah. And such trust have we through God, to Christ to, to Godward. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. So here, we're not talking, again, this goes back to God's our bread provider. He's our caretaker. <clears throat> we're not talking about um, I can do all things because I'm somebody great. Uh, I know people have quoted that. They've really misquoted that scripture. I can do all things. I can do anything. I can do all things. Really using a partial Bible verse for the power of positive thinking. But when you leave out the rest of that verse of Philippians 4.19, that I can do all things, when you leave out the rest of that, you've, you've laid out a misnomer. Because you see, my sufficiency is not of myself. My sufficiency is not because I just happen to have the such and such family constitution. It's not just because I'm a, you know, just happen to be a real go-getter or never give up type person. My sufficiency, Paul writes there and says, um, not that we should, um, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves. But our sufficiency is of God. And so when you go to Philippians 4.19, and, and uh, you know, Paul writes there and says, um, I'm sorry, not Philippians 4.19, 4.13, you know, 4.13, where he says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Now, right before that, verse 12 says, um, let's, let's just read um. 11 through 13 here. 
not that I speak um, in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content, or as the 20th century says, to be independent of the circumstances. I know how to be abased. I know how to abound. And everywhere in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Now, one translation um, I was reading a number of years ago. Let's, let's go back. We were reading um, out of Second, I mean, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 <clears throat> through 13. Paul says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have uh, learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Again, the 20th century says I've learned to be independent of the circumstances. And um, verse 12 of Philippians chapter 4 says, I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. So again, verse 11 said Paul makes a statement that I've learned <coughs> um, to be whatever state I'm in, to be independent of the circumstances. Then he comes back and says, um, I know how, I said that earlier, when, before we lost the internet, we had to come back up with a different feed. Um, then a translation I was reading one time stated it this way. Um, I know how, no matter how I'm initiated in life, okay, he says, I know how to be independent of circumstances. I know how to abound and not lose my head. I know how to be abased and not lose my poise. Okay. So you don't go crazy because everything's going great and you don't lose, um, go, go the other way because things are going bad. Paul, why? Because Paul said, I'm independent of the circumstances. They don't govern me. Circumstances are not my governing Lord. Why? Because God is your Lord. Uh, you know, remember, Jesus is your Lord. We confess him as Lord. God has taken position in our lives as our caretaker. G we have taken position in lives as his sons. And because I can do, I I'm not, uh, I'm independent of the circumstances, I'm not going to uh, lose my head when I abound. I'm not going to lose my poise when I'm abased. And then he makes this statement. I can do all things. <clears throat> Through Christ, which strengtheneth me. So I can face <clears throat> uncertain, difficult circumstances with great confidence because those circumstances I'm independent of. And I can maintain a level head in the midst of abundance and overflow because I'm independent of the circumstances. Now notice it says, I can do all things through Christ, which, not who, but which strengtheneth me. And there's a reason for this. The word Christ, Christos, um, C-H-R-I-S-T-O-S, is the Greek form of um, the Hebrew Hamashiach, or translated Messiah. And it literally means, it's not Jesus' last name, Okay. Technically, it would be more accurate to say he's Jesus the Christ, okay? Jesus Christ, it wasn't his first and last name. Christ literally meant the anointed one. The anointed one. I can do all things through the anointed one. Now, and his anointing, because what's the anointed one anointed with? The anointing. And Isaiah declares... I believe chapter 10, verse 27, but I could be wrong. Um, it's not in my notes because uh, I wasn't going there, but I'm, I'm there now. Um, that the yoke shall be removed from off of thy shoulder. Oh, the burden shall be removed off of thy shoulder. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So from that, we could take away that the anointing of God is the yoke destroying, burden removing power of God. The yoke destroying, burden removing power of God. So we say, I can do all things through Christ, which, so it's making a reference to what he's anointed with. The yoke destroying, burden removing power of God. Now we know what yoke is. It's a farm implement term for beast of burden that, um, that you take and tie it together with a yoke to keep them in lock sync with one another. And, but see, 
circumstances of life will try to yoke themselves to you. And so you have to walk lockstep with the circumstance. And it becomes a weight and a burden instead of being liberated. <clears throat> and so the only yoke we're supposed to have where Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, but burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my, or he said, take my yoke upon thee, and I'll give you rest. See, we're to be yoked together with Christ. So we walk lockstep with him in liberation and freedom, in abundance over and, and, and deliverance from the um, circumstances of this world. And we're walking in harmony with him. We're to be yoked together with Christ. Glory to God. And so he says here, I can do all things through Christ which. So we, we like to say it this way because it, it really clarifies what's being stated. I can do all things through the anointed one and his anointing. That yoke destroying, burden removing power of God. Which strengtheneth me. See to be liberated from bondages and yokes of the enemy bring strength to your to your soul bring strength to your body because now you're uh, we're to be leave there and be yoked with Christ we walk now in his strength we walk in his ability we walk in his power glory to God and not on our own and not on our own methods or our own means or our own ways we walk in him. Glory to God. So we become lords over circumstances because the greater one is in us. John, the apostle John wrote um, that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Glory to God. The greater one rises up and establishes in us his authority, his victory. And leads us into that place of overcoming. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It is his ability, his ability, not mine, but it is his ability that causes us to prevail. He is our wisdom. He is our understanding. Amen. He gives us direction that we need to overcome. Uh, the 27th Psalm verse 1 says, the Lord or Jehovah. Um, is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? Jehovah is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? A little course we used to sing, Jehovah is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? I love that old course. Glory to God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Glory. He is his ability in me that causes me to prevail. With his wisdom, the light. See, wisdom refers to light. Or light refers to wisdom. And his understanding, we get direction, instruction that we need to overcome. Glory to God. And our salvation is our redemption from Satan's dominion over us. Again, our salvation is our redemption from Satan's dominion over us. We have no fear of defeat. Sickness, disease, poverty, or death itself. Because we are masters of Satan now. We have a new song to sing. Glory to God. Isn't it good to have a new song to sing? A song of victory. A song of overcoming. A song, the song of the redeemed. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, Psalm 56, 9. When I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back. For this I know. For God is for me. And then for Psalm 46, 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God is my refuge. God is my strength, a very present help in trouble. Glory to God. So you can say that all day. Yeah, therefore I will not fear, though the earth be, uh, be the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. <clears throat> Woo! Started that good? All right. Praise God. But I got there. Hallelujah. God is our... See, it gives us... The song of the redeemed is a new song. 
The song of the redeemed is not woe is me. Here I live on Barrier to Get Along Street, street next to Grumble Alley. Right around the corner from not sure if I'm going to make it or not. No, the song of the redeemed is a song of victory. Hallelujah. The 126th Psalm says, When the Lord turned the captivity as I am, then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Wherefore they said among the heathen, The Lord has done great things for them. Yea, uh, the Lord has done great things for us. Whereof we're glad. You, read, you listen to some Christians, they read that and they say, Whereof I'm sad. Or whereof I'm mad. But no, whereof we're glad. The Lord turned again our captivity. Our song, the song of the redeemed, is the song of victory. Because God is my refuge and God is my strength. He is the very present help in trouble. Amen? Hallelujah. <clears throat> Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's right. God, the greater one, Emmanuel, the almighty, El Shaddai, the eternal great God, Jehovah, the creator, the great I am that I am. Hallelujah. Yes, him, him, him. He is the one that is in you. He is with you in every situation. His strength, he strengthens you with his power. Let the weak say, I am strong. Also says, let the poor say, I'm rich. Hallelujah. Amen. Zechariah says in Zechariah 4, 6, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Um, one translation says, Not by might, not by armies, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. He calls you to be able to face whatever circumstances of life as the masters and the victorious because the captain of victory, Jehovah Nisi, is Lord over you. Amen? The Lord, our banner of victory. Hallelujah. The Lord, our, that's what Jehovah Nisi means. The Lord, our banner of victory, the captain of our victory. Hallelujah. And I quoted this a couple times already, but 1 John 4, 4, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater, we've overcome. We have, didn't say we're going to overcome. He says we have overcome. Because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Glory to God. Well, who's in the world? And who the God of this world, talk about Satan, hath blinded the eyes lest they should see. And believe the truth of the glorious gospel. That's a little paraphrasing, but hallelujah. So because of this, God is our caretaker. He's our, he's our provider. He, he takes his position as bread provider and Lord over our lives, caretaker. We take our positions as sons. We stand in righteousness. We stand in his power. We stand in these places. Glory to God. We're now situation masters. What enhances or brings this about in our life so that it, it brings full realization of these things. We must become God inside minded. We must recognize that God indwells us. As we become God inside minded, he's indwelling there always. We need to be aware of it. Hello? Hello? We need to be aware of it. He places at our disposal all of his limitless resources. He's there to meet our every need. We only need to respond to the word of God in faith, and he is on the move in our behalf. The, the realization that the greater one is in you. Not in the sweet by and by. When we meet on that beautiful shore, hello, he's inside of us right now. He's taking up residence in us right now. 
He's abiding in us right now. Well, I don't believe all that. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open that door, I and my Father will come in and make our abode with him. He'll dwell there. The greater one is indwelling us. And as we become God inside minded, we become aware that God, the creator of the universe, the, the, the one who stood and looked into nothing and said, light be, light was, and created all this with his words, then formed man from the dust of the ground. He's moved on the inside of us through the new birth. Taking up residence, taking that position as the caretaker and Lord of our lives, elevated us to the position of sons and daughters. Hallelujah. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And he made us heirs and joint heirs with Christ. Now we have access to all that he is, all of his ability, all of his glorious resources have become in our hands. Jesus said in John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Not, well, I'll just say one thing. It just might not be God's will today to do that for you. It's just, you know, God has a sovereign reason for making you sick and not, not, not doing anything good for you. And uh, just trust him one of these days, you know, and then we preach at the funeral. Yeah, they've entered into their healing. They got their ultimate healing. Divine healing had nothing to do with heaven. Because your body is raised in incorruption and immortality. When you die, your body does not get healed. It goes into the dust of the ground, and it's resurrected. This corruption puts on incorruption, and this mortal puts on immortality. It's a glorified body. It doesn't get healed. It gets completely redo redone. You get a do-over. Not subject to sickness, disease, or death. So you didn't get your ultimate healing. Healing's for here. Right now. In this world. In this life. Glory to God. Ask what you will and it shall be. Remember, he's abiding in you. I want to close tonight with a, um, a confession. And so I'm going, to, I'm going to say this. And I want you to come right behind me. I'm going to give you time to do it there. Wherever you are. And for you to do it, and, and you, you say it right after me. I am a new creation. I have passed from death unto life. And the life of God now dwells in me. The greater one lives in me. Whatever he can do, I can do. Because... He is, he is in me. His ability, His ability is my ability. My ability. His, strength His strength is my strength. His wisdom, His wisdom is, my wisdom. is my wisdom. I can do all things, do all things through, the one through the greater one who strengthens me. Strengthens Praise, me. God. Praise God. I am, I am what he says I am. Says I, am. I can do what he says I can do. I will go where he says go. Because, because he enables me, I shall never fail. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. The greater ones in us. That living word, not just the word living in us, but the living word in us. God made you 
and raised you up and settled upon you position of a son and a joint heir with Christ. Glory to God. Um, don't, for, you know, don't forget to um, join us Sunday morning in person at New Life Family Church as we um, have a combined service with their church and their guest speaker, Kim Clout, at 10 o'clock, not 1030. We've been announcing for some time 1030, but it, we had the wrong time. It's 10 o'clock. And if, some, if I hadn't said something to, one of, uh, to, to um, somebody at the church, at their church about it, uh, and said, well, we'll be see you all next Sunday at 1030. He says, 10 o'clock. What? Yeah, it's 10 o'clock. I thought it was, nope. So we had, we had, we've been backing up trying to get that straightened out. Hallelujah. Um, we apologize for the technical difficulties. Uh, if you want to see the very beginning of tonight's service, you have to go look <clears throat> at the other service that posts um, prior to, with the same date, but prior to this one. And then we lose complete internet. And I went back and picked up right where we left off. <clears throat> so you won't miss anything by watching the two videos. Praise God. Um, but know this. You are a situation master. Because the, the, the father has taken that position as caretaker over your life. Elevated you to sonship. And now we walk as heirs and joint heirs with Christ. As kingdom, as a kingdom not kings and priests, but as a kingdom of priests before our God. Hallelujah. You have the greater one in you. So be bold. Be strong. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Amen. Until next time, remember these words from uh, the first epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 4. And whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Love you. God bless you. See you next time here at Faith and Victory Church online.